Hi there, and welcome to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Shuckborough, and Widget and I this morning are outside the Church of St. Peter's in Hook Norton in Oxfordshire. Now, the Cotswolds is an extraordinarily varied region. There are large, bustling 21st century towns where modern life drives everything, despite their ancient architectural history. There are small towns that have adapted their medieval buildings and infrastructure to deal with the demands of the time. And then there are villages which seem slowly to have evolved from ancient farming communities into what we in this century see as incredibly beautiful relics of a simpler time when everything moved more slowly and people were nicer to one another. Now, of course, nothing is ever that simple, but Hook Norton does seem to fit very neatly into that latter category. The village is first mentioned in 917 in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle. At that time its name meant village on the slopes of Hocker. No one seems to know who Hocker was. Like most of the old villages in the area, Hook Norton started life as a small river crossing around which an agricultural community grew. Farmhouses surrounded by the hovels and cottages of the farm labourers, usually thatched roofed with wooden structures. As things improved, the houses were increasingly built of local stone and the village started to take on the feel of the Hook Norton we know today. Sitting as it does on the eastern edge of the Cotswolds, it stands on an ironstone ridge, quite different from the gold or grey limestone for which the region is famous. This not only influenced the style and look of the buildings, but from the late 1800s into the 20th century, it gave Hook Norton a taste of the industrial the arrival of the railway in Hooky marked the beginning of a new industry using the very rock on which it stood. The ironstone was mined and smelted in the village and started a new period of wealth and success. The incredible effort required to build the railway brought thousands of workers to the village. Tunnels and cuttings were dug and viaducts constructed to take the line through the hills and valleys. Remnants of the work are still visible today. A brewery was built to quench the thirst of the workers. Once the railway closed in the 1960s, the mining obviously stopped, but the brewery continued. Hook Norton Brewery is still the biggest employer in the village by far, certainly one of the very few remaining Victorian Tower breweries still in existence, let alone working, and the source of one of the finest brews in the nation. I think we'd better go and see them. Come with me, and we'll meet Mark Graham, who's going to show us around. Wow, this is your engine. Yes, this is the, uh, the original steam engine, so it would have powered everything within the brewery, uh, right. including these two water pumps, um, which are no longer used, but they would have, their job would have been obviously pumped the water up from below the, below the brewery, right. uh, where the water source comes from. You have your own wells sunk. We do, yeah. It's, uh, it's, there's another borehole in the back field now, but it's, it's, right. uh, it's like an aquifer. Yep. Um, so we share it, actually share it with Blenheim Palace. Oh, do you really? Um, oh, we brewed a beer for them, and they wanted to use their spring water. So yeah. we tanked it over, and then we tested it, and worked out that actually it's the same water. It's exactly the so, same. <laughs> but, <laughs> so uh, then James right. sort of thought he might want to bottle it, but that idea didn't happen. So no, um, okay. But yeah, yeah. it's uh, again another reason why the brewery is here because there's a natural water source. Yeah. Uh, you've got the crops. You've got the you know. Um, it's kind of all the, all the ingredients are here to yeah. To, yeah. to brew beer. But yeah, uh, Richard so, Steam Engine from 19, oh sorry, 1899. Right. Uh, we still run it on the first Saturday of each month um, because you get a lot of enthusiasts about uh, the I Steam Engines want to come along and see it working. Yes, well, it's, a, it's obviously very beautifully, beautifully kept. I mean, there mm. are these these things are really rare now, aren't they? They, they, they are. We think it's the it's the only one in the UK that can still be used for its original use. So these wires, this is a gauge, obviously goes right up to the top floor where the water tanks are. Right. So we can tell oh. that we've got four foot or three foot of water in the tanks at the moment, which mm -hmm. means we can make 135 barrels of beer. 
Oh, so really? Very, so it does the conversion for you as well? Yeah, so yeah, these go these right at the barrels. top, and there's a little, uh, right at the top, there's a, obviously the a gauge. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, so, so, and this takes us through the, the whole process. Yeah, so cold liquor or water goes yeah. in the top. Uh, then you've got your grist mill, which, uh, so then you get your multiplier up, up into there. Right. So you, you mill it into the hopper, then you take your water, you warm it up, you mix the two together in the mash tuns, which we'll just see in a minute. Right. Uh, basically a brewer's porridge. Um, yeah. And, <laughs> and then that gets drained off into the copper, which is through there, uh, where it gets heated. That, at that point, you, then, you can then add your hops right. uh, down into the hop back, um, where it sits for a while, and then it gets transferred back up into the fermenting tuns. So leaving the hops behind, that's why it's called a hop back. Yeah, so it's don't take keeping the hops, the hops it. behind. Ended up in the fermenting tons, which will in the fermenting room, yeah, where it sits for about a week, and then it gets dropped down into the storage tank, and then into yeah. the cast and out the door. So the fermenting tons, uh, you've cooled it a bit before it gets to. The Sorry, yeah, tons, that's, uh, yeah, so yeah, the heat exchanger yeah, here, yeah, so it's, yeah, and then, and then it comes. So, it's, so your fermentation is taking place at a fairly low temperature, then, and not, yes. not too hot. No, no, no. Okay. So it's a strong volume beer today. Yep. So large mash, but a fairly little runoff. Right. So out of about three ton of malt, we're only going to get about 78 barrels. Oh, I see. Right. Okay. Um, so that's why it's so full in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's we're only going to get about 78 barrels from that. Yes, I see. So um, we just started the sparge. And this is this is uh, this no. sprinkling no. process is a is a business of turning it over is it? um, it's uh, what's basically what's happening is um, when they mashed in this morning yeah um, obviously used the steel smasher up in the top of there is the dry grist yeah so it's the crushed barley yeah um, it was mixed in with water yeah at 155 Fahrenheit because right. we work in Fahrenheit still yes right okay, um, and um, at least I understand it yes, and then right. it sits in there for uh, an hour and a quarter right um, and that's just soaking. It's basically just soaking. It yeah. starts with the enzymes and all the sugar starting to break down, like come out of the malt. Yeah, right. Um, basically, if you imagine like a big tea bag sat there, yeah, absolutely. Sort of stewing into the water. Kind of that's infusion in there. of a kind. Yes. Yeah. Mark's fascinating tour took us to the very top of this building to see the mill itself, the old winches and lifts that take the grain and yeast off the lorries and up to the higher floors of the building. The whole process laid out and set up so many years ago and still brewing brilliant beer to this day. It's an incredible insight into a Victorian way of life that remains totally relevant and efficient in the 21st century. Slightly less efficient, but certainly worth preserving, are the huge horses that pull the drays that deliver to the local hooky estate. These days, tourism forms an important part of the brewery's business. They have a fascinating museum here. You can book a tour of the brewery to experience the whole thing yourself. And now, in September 2017, they're in the middle of building a new restaurant to meet your every need. We do strongly recommend a visit. If you want to find out any more about the village before you visit, the Hook Norton Local History Group has an excellent website, and the Village Museum and Archive is based in the brewery itself. Well, we've had an amazing time at the Hook Norton Brewery. Thank you to Mark for showing us around. It is a fascinating process, and it's rather wonderful to see this business develop into a tourist attraction the way it is. Don't forget you can find us on Facebook and on Twitter. But look for our website, the Cotswold Explorer of Coding UK, where you'll find everything we do. We'll see you next month.